Hey peeps, I'm James Buckle of Engage Pixel. When I'm not making indie games, I can be found in my secret lair where I'm planning to take over the world. Shh, don't tell anybody. In this part of my game post more than for Captain Kaon, I'm going to be talking about theme. It's an important subject that is often misunderstood or sometimes simply ignored, but it's also the difference between making a simple piece of entertainment and something that's art. Stick around and I'll tell you all about theme and how I went about it with Captain Kaon. To put themes simply, it's the subject matter that your game is about. It's the topic that you're trying to explore. Theme gives something meaning and a greater significance beyond simply being pure entertainment. It can be something like revenge, redemption, or the struggle of good against evil. But it can also be something much deeper, like the effect of scientific progress on society, which is one of the themes of Frankenstein. When you have a theme like this running through your game, it will tie all of the elements together and give them meaning. To put theme another way, when you're at school, this is all the stuff your English literature teacher talked about that you found really boring. Let's take a look at a fable as an example of theme. These were stories that had an underlying lesson. They are about something more than the simple story itself. In The Ants and the Grasshopper, the grasshopper spends its summer dancing, singing and generally having fun. All the while, the ants work hard to find food and store it for winter, because winter is coming. The grasshopper mocks the ants and puts its feet up playing its fiddle and enjoying the sun. But when the snow finally arrives, it can't find any food. It goes to the ants and begs for food, but the ants tell the grasshopper to fiddle the winter away. And so the grasshopper starves, because Aesop didn't write stories with happy endings. The lesson, or theme, of the story is about working hard and planning for the future. But it's also that ants are dicks who need to learn how to share. So how is theme handled in games? In my experience, not always that well at all. Usually, when I discuss it with people, they think I'm talking about setting. If you Google video game theme, you will either get songs or settings, and it's neither. There's a little bit of an overlap between theme and setting, which is partly why there's confusion. If you go to a pirate theme park, it's a park about pirates. But the tropical islands, the sailboats, the 18th century technology that you see all around you, that's just the setting that the park is using. The subject matter of the park is pirates, which is buried treasure, eye patches saying yar matey, and the freedom from the lash of an oppressive navy, because this is what it is to be a pirate. Video games started out as pure entertainment. There's no deep existential meaning to Pong. In the days of 8-bit and 16-bit games, the physical limitations of the systems meant that games focused just on being fun. Through the 90s and into the noughts, you made your games stand out through better graphics, smoother gameplay, and unique mechanics. Games weren't seen as being art, they were just toys that you played with. But now, how many indie games have you seen with bleeding edge graphics? Or for that matter, how many AAA games are really pushing the graphical envelope? The things that helped games stand out before no longer really matter. The games industry needs to start embracing theme and move beyond being simple entertainment. With theme you can enrich and inspire. You can comment on the human condition and the world around you you can create something lasting that stays with players long after they have finished your game. It will make them want to play it again, buy the sequel, and recommend it to their friends. <laughs> to explain theme in a game relevant way, let's take a look at my old friend Total War. What's the theme in Shogun? It's not feudal Japan. What about Rome? It's not the Roman Empire. Both of these are the setting that the games use. The theme in Total War is war. But it's not simply that alone. War is a broad subject that theme can explore. You have the human costs of war, its pain, suffering and futility. There's the necessity of war as a mechanism for social, political and economical change. You have war as a fraternal bonding experience, the brotherhood of soldiers. All of these are different ways you can explore war as a theme. Total War explores war in the context of conquest and imperial expansion on a grand scale. It's about the power achieved through domination and the glory of war. This is why there's no point in the game where war is shown to be bad. It doesn't dwell on the death or the pain and suffering that war causes. This is why there are no refugees in total war. You can contrast this war theme with Spec Ops The Line, which takes a different look at war. 
On release, Spec Ops didn't really sell that well, and its reviews were decent but not spectacular. Later, it found a cult following and it exploded. So, what was it about Spec Ops that gave it this success? It's not the gameplay. It's a decent third-person shooter, the gameplay and mechanics are put together well, so it's reasonably fun to play without being amazing. It's set in a Saudi city that has been buried in a sandstorm, so it's got modern architecture that's covered in sand. Visually this doesn't really do a lot, it's all fairly clean and bland, so it certainly wasn't that that gave it appeal. It wasn't the influence of the PR and marketing team, you get that at release. By the time Spec Ops started selling, the PR team and its publisher had probably forgotten it existed. The thing that helped Spec Ops was the deep theme that permeated the game. Spec Ops is a game about the horrors of war and its effects on the soldiers who fight it. To play the game is to travel through a slow descent into madness and chaos. It deliberately starts out as a fairly bland experience, but then it slowly develops as you go through the game, initially without you really noticing. Through theme, it delivers an incredible and lasting experience, one that made you think about your actions and their effects. It made people go, wow. It made people go, holy shit, buy this game. The experience gamers had was infectious, and they spread it to others through word of mouth. This is the power of theme, and it made Spec Ops the line of cult classic. Some games have simple themes, like the fairly common good versus evil theme that is the staple of fantasy. This basic heroic theme is something that a lot of games have without really trying, and it's been around since before Mario. The player is the hero, and they will strive against adversity to defeat the evilest evil that has ever eviled. This is a theme that has no real depth to it, yet we see it time and again because it's easy to understand and easy to implement. In fact, it's often implemented without people ever really realising it's a theme. This leads to poor execution of theme. A far better theme would be to explore what it means to be a hero, or to question the difference between good and evil. This would be more interesting as a subject because it would make the player think more about what they are doing. A game that used theme to elevate itself above its tried and tested mechanics is the 2013 edition of Tomb Raider. It had the same traversal mechanics that the series is known for, they were well polished and fun to play, but traversal can be found in many games now and is done just as well. Tomb Raider could easily have disappeared into a crowd of derivative games. It still had the iconic character of Lara Croft, but if that was all it needed to sell then core design would still be around and Crystal Dynamics wouldn't have taken over. The thing that makes it stand out is that it's thematically about something. It's a coming of age story where Lara Croft goes from being a naive girl to a brave woman. It's also a story about survival and becoming self-reliant. By weaving these themes in, the game becomes a more enjoyable and rewarding experience. And to see what the game would have been like without a strong theme, just look at the follow-up, Rise of the Tomb Raider. It just doesn't have the same lasting impression. So how do I go about creating the theme for Captain Calm? Well, to begin with, I kind of didn't. Um, I was a bit too busy focusing on the making the levels and developing the gameplay mechanics, so I didn't really give it much thought until it was getting quite late. Part of the problem of being a development team with one is that you have to wear all of the hats at once, and sometimes some of them fall off. The ideal is to have your theme first and then use it to inform and inspire the other aspects of your game, but sometimes this doesn't work out and that's okay too. You may need to develop some of your game first to see what direction it's going in. Then potential themes can begin to show themselves. Once you've decided on the theme you can always go back and make changes that enhance your game. As I was developing the series campaign for Captain Kaon, I realised something. Your enemies are just some miners that are in a revolt and you have to suppress them. That's not really a good guy thing to do. It's something that many soldiers throughout history have been asked to do, and it's something that has always been wrong with hindsight, so I decided I wanted to make the player think about their actions and ask, are we the baddies? In the end this proved a little bit difficult to do, there just wasn't that much scope to add ambiguity into the game in this way. In terms of gameplay mechanics, in the campaign you gain more resources by exploiting regions you control. I specifically chose the term exploit for this action because it means to gain unfairly. I wanted to give the player the idea that they would be taking these resources in a way that was not entirely just. Changing the mission mechanics proved a little bit more difficult. When you kill an enemy it leaves behind a charred wreck that reminds me of what you have done. I didn't want them getting cleaned up, I wanted this level to show signs that you had passed through and made a mess, kind of like the scorched earth behind a marching army. 
And to add to this, any stray bullets that hit buildings will cause damage, smoke and destruction. Some of these buildings are clearly civilian habitats. If the player is looking closely at what they're doing, they might feel like they're causing some unfriendly collateral damage. I had wanted to tie these buildings in a little further. First, by having stats on the mission complete screen. Bullets fired, enemy pulse destroyed, total civilian casualties. This would have hammered home the idea that you're not the nicest person in the world and would have given the player a reason to pick and choose when they shot instead of simply spraying bullets everywhere. Unfortunately, I ran out of time and couldn't do a stat screen beyond the simple mission time I have at the moment. I also tried to tie the collateral damage you do in a mission to the revolt chance of the region you gain. Due to a few bugs, I couldn't get it to work in time for release, and I wasn't quite sure how it would affect the campaign balancing. It may have had an adverse effect on the overall gameplay experience. A key way that thing comes across is in the story. In Captain Kaon, the story is fed to the player through short mission reports. The theme influenced the tone of the writing. You're not sent on missions to help the people of Ceres, you're sent to take control. The subtext of the writing is one that implies your actions are oppressive in nature. To give you an idea of how adding theme into Captain Kaon has helped, when I was showing the game at Res, I was talking to a journalist. He played the game and liked it, but his enthusiasm noticeably grew when I started talking about this idea that the player might be the bad guy that there was more to the game than just shooting stuff. This enthusiasm came across later in his review. I hope I've given you something to think about. When you give your game a subject matter at its heart, when you make it about something that matters, you make your game deep and meaningful. It won't guarantee commercial success, but you'll have a better chance of critical success and you're more likely to make a game that you're proud of. As always, if you have any questions, then ask them below and I'll try to answer them as best as I can. If you found this video entertaining, if it was interesting and helpful to you, then it would be great if you could give it a like. It would also be awesome if you share it with any friends you think might also like it. If you want to support my channel and this video series, then I don't have a Patreon or anything at the moment, but I do have a little game on Steam, you might have heard of it, it's called Captain Kale. Um, pop over and pick yourself up a copy. Um, I hope you enjoy it. I'll be back next week with another game postmortem video and I'll be talking about the 50 sci-fi art style that I chose for the game's aesthetic. I'll be giving you tips on how to choose and develop an art style so hit subscribe and follow my channel to see it. Until then, enjoy playing games and I'll see you next time.